Welcome back to the Daily Dope Show. It's your host Brando, the Weed Commando. <clears throat> um, yeah, we're gonna get right into the story here. Uh, it's something I've been seeing all year with all this coronavirus, COVID nineteen uh, stuff happening. <clears throat> As usual, you have the the corrupt players, the CDC, WHO, and uh, the FDA, and a bunch of drug manufacturers getting together to basically, in my opinion, now if you follow me on Twitter, you probably don't know whether I uh, think this thing's just a complete hoax, or if I'm just out there like, you know, criticizing certain things like mask mandates and lockdowns, because I'm not who you thought I was and people that criticize those things get automatically considered some kind of a right winger or a Trump person or some other name that they've come up with to indicate low information, whatever, which is just absurd. First of all, um, the whole idea that you can just bunch all the people that think one thing into one group. And, you know, this is a, this is a country with, over 300 million people in it. <laughs> so it's just, it's just absurd that you think you could do that. But we have this situation where, you know, cannabis is being used to treat COVID-19. COVID-19 is the disease that you get if you have this coronavirus that they call SARS-CoV-2. And also, there's also studies being done that would suggest that if you perhaps smoked medical marijuana, really good medical marijuana, or medical marijuana with high levels of CBD. All of these different studies have been conducted over the last year. And basically, you know, to, to prevent you from getting uh, COVID-19 or even pr prevent you from contracting the, you know, the actual virus itself by you know means of blocking the receptors that the virus needs to access in order to get uh, to replicate itself and eventually infect you with its with itself so let's let's go ahead and look at these the false claim marijuana kills coronavirus article by reuters which came out in march of 2020 about a year ago these uh but you know before coronavirus really set into America we had all this information coming in from China and Italy about what people were doing to kind of help fight it on their own and marijuana kept coming up um, people were talking about you know using cannabis to block the receptors or make it so once you get coronavirus it doesn't kill you <laughs> nobody knew exactly why but people were talking about it and there hadn't been any studies yet so there was memes being made about it probably and quite frankly people like me were just saying hey do you know anybody that <laughs> smokes good weed every day uh that got this thing or whatever so anyway this reuters article came out in march talking about marijuana kills coronavirus see nobody ever said that and as you see real quickly this is just a complete straw man article with a completely made up premise um, based on probably internet memes, just is completely, <laughs> just like no reason to run with it, but they did because it's weed. You know, whenever you got weed, when somebody's talking about weed and they're talking about the good things that it can do, they're going to want to have every bit of scientific proof and double blind placebo studies and all this stuff before they even hear you out. And then they're still going to deny your claims. But if it's something bad, marijuana, then they don't need any science at all. They can just say it enough times and everybody will believe it's true. And they will say it with no evidence or proof or studies or anything because that's what they do. That's what they've always done. And Reuters, quite frankly, is one of the biggest purveyors of this kind of thinking where, oh, if something comes out positive marijuana, we got to tell you that it's wrong no matter what. That's just our position. So let's just read this. Social media users have been sharing an image online that claims marijuana kills the coronavirus. The image appears to be a photograph of a breaking news report, but does not show the channel's logo or name anywhere. See, this is a, this straw man is so perfectly created that 
it's almost as if they created it themselves just to write the article sometimes. In some cases. I'm not saying this is the case. We don't know if this is the case here because they don't actually provide examples. So back to it. The report uh, uses the term weed as a slang for marijuana, which is fine. Reuters cannot find any major news organizations broadcasting this image. Because, you know, it's just simply not true if mainstream didn't say it. <laughs> That's the mentality that they have, and they're trying to. And this is, and we're in a, a new age of censorship where they're basically trying to instill that as a value. Like, oh, if the if CNN didn't say it, it's definitely not true. You know, we've been telling you this, this is for for a long time, but simply not the case. In fact, I'm telling you, those are the people that are lying the most about everything, especially coronavirus. So <laughs> you're gonna believe them at your own risk. Um, and also, they continuously put out uh, contradictory information. And, you know, Dr. Fauci himself, oh, don't wear masks, wear masks, wear, don't wear a mask, wear two masks, wear three masks. Wait a minute, wearing two or three masks might not be... This is just one example. And they've been doing this with every bit of rollout with coronavirus information. They got a bunch of people over here telling you one thing, a bunch of people over here or the same people telling you the exact opposite, and then go fight among yourselves. Meanwhile, the only thing they've really offered as a solution is vaccines that aren't vaccines, masks that haven't been proven to actually do anything, and lockdowns that are killing more people than the virus itself. So, I don't know, maybe they should think about looking at something that might work like weed. And yeah, weed's a good word for marijuana. In fact, it's better than marijuana for a lot of reasons. So, back to the article, they talk about many of those sharing this image appear to have done so in the manner of a joke. Because that's what it was, all right? And if it wasn't a joke, it was an exaggeration. Like everything they do with coronavirus has been an exaggeration. But when you do it with weed, it's even if it is a joke, then they're, they're going to write articles about it to try to debunk it or whatever. Because that's just the petty behavior that they've been engaged with since, quite frankly, every day of the last 85 years that marijuana has been illegal. But anyway, it's been shared along with a call for the legalization of the drug. And then they got this link to a tweet where you're supposed to have seen this uh, joke meme shared. But guess what? Tweet is unavailable. And why doesn't that surprise anybody? Because that's just what they always do. They don't have anything here. Um, furthermore, we'll go back to the article. There is no evidence to back up the claim that marijuana kills coronavirus. Yeah, because that's not the actual claim, all right? And I wish they would revisit uh, this because this is kind of disingenuous what they do right after that sentence. The World Health Organization lists smoking as one of the things that are not effective against the virus and might cause harm. While this might refer to cigarette smoking, the American Lung Association explains that smoking marijuana can also damage lungs and potentially affect the immune system and its ability to fight off disease. Yeah, but the, except for that's not true. And there's no scientist that has ever said that and no scientific uh, studies that can back that up. And there's absolutely no basis or premise for the American Lung Association to even make these kind of statements. The American Lung Association is highly corrupt and has absolutely no business chiming in on anything to do with with anything quite frankly um and that's not even my opinion that's just a, a statement of fact the american lung association is not to be trusted all right so the michael g de grote center of medical cannabis research advises on their website in addition to airway injury cannabis smoke may increase the risk of airway infections such as pneumonia that is false too there's no science that's got anything leading towards that and if you're talking about this cannabis smoke may actually decrease those problems um now you know what does cause uh, infections such as pneumonia wearing masks masks cause upper respiratory including throat and uh all everywhere from your nose on down pneumonia and respiratory infections infections in your sinus ca nasal cavities uh zits <laughs> marijuana has been tested to be beneficial in some health conditions unrelated to those prevented by coronavirus cases the national center for Com complementary and in integrative health lists uses for marijuana in conditions that may be beneficial and says 
Drugs containing cannabinoids may be helpful in treating rare forms of epilepsy, nausea, and vomiting associated with cancer, chemotherapy, and loss of appetite, weight loss, and associated HIV AIDS. In addition, some evidence suggests modest benefits of cannabis and cannabinoids for chronic pain and multiple sclerosis symptoms. Cannabis isn't helpful for glaucoma. That's not true either. Research on cannabis or cannabinoids for other conditions in its early, is in its early stages. So this is fine and dandy that they want to um, make this declaration. But what this essentially is, is that with the preponderance and overwhelming nature of the evidence, they can't deny that, that cannabis helps the following things. And then they list the things that, that they can no longer sit there and lie about. All right. There hasn't been very much studies on glaucoma, and the ones that have been done are completely fraudulent. Um, and this is a na National Institute on Health and the CDC that have done these studies, and the FDA has used these studies to make their claims or their declarations. But let me just tell you that none of those studies, and I've looked at them all, have anything to do with proving or disproving any of the things that have just been listed, including the glaucoma studies. And if you want to challenge me on that, go ahead. I'll, feel free. I'll debate you on it. Uh, I, I'll pull the study up and read it right to you. <laughs> Research on cannabis or cannabinoids for other conditions is necessarily... These people don't seem to care about the research that is being done right now either. So if you go back to Reuters now, and I have, they don't have no updates on this. This is just them preemptively striking down all you know ideas in people's heads that there could be a possibility that cannabis might help you when you contract coronavirus or help you prevent you from contracting it in the first place so there's no evidence that success marijuana could cure COVID-19 who advises against smoking of course and blah 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 so false claim there's no evidence proving marijuana can cure coronavirus you know, there's no there's no evidence that anything you have can cure anything out there. You don't have there's cure is a bad word to use in the medical world because there really isn't cures. All right, there's no cures for anything. It's all just treatments. No one makes the claim that cannabis can cure cancer or heart. You know, cure just even the things in that list that they said. Oh, it's really good for this, that, and the other, but can't do this. You know, there's no none of that's cures. We're not talking about cures here. New York Post, almost, what is this, the same day? <laughs> so you get these conflicting things. March 16th was when the Reuters talked about that. Now, a couple days later, on March, or about a month later, on May 21st, 2020, New York Times, New York Post decides they're going to come out and say that. Scientists believe cannabis could help prevent and treat coronavirus. Now, those are better words to use in the medical world. Um, we're not into cures. We don't know about cures. What is a cure? Have you ever seen someone cure diabetes? The thing about cures is, is you have to address the reason why the thing happened in the first place. So if you talk about curing cancer, they never have a cure for cancer because when they do the chemo and the radiation, they also don't tell you to change your diet or whatever it was, quit the smoking. They might tell you to quit the smoking, but they know it's futile. They don't try to help you. They don't address the systemic cause of the dang thing. <laughs> so, you know, speaking of... I just seen this over on the side and I have to just quickly look at it. Cannabis dispensaries linked to 30% drop in opioid deaths study. Yeah, if you look at my videos on that, every single time, the FDA, the CDC, WHO, NIH, all of them, all the corrupt players are always telling you that this is not the case. Don't you can't use cannabis is not a good thing. It's not going to I just don't understand where, why they were so adamant to go against something like that with so many people suffering, just like now. You know, you have all these people. And when we look at these studies in a minute, this video is probably going to get pretty long. When we look at these studies, you're going to what, what you will find is that a lot of times the people that are in these studies, especially in Israel where it's allowed, are older people that probably wouldn't live if you put them on a um in, an incubator or uh you know the ventilator um we remember back in new york when the ventilator problem was uh, they were putting the people on the ventilators 
because they had the uh, the cytostorms creating just catastrophe in their lungs, and the people died almost immediately after they were put on ventilators. Or if it kept them alive for 24 more hours, it didn't help them. It didn't fight off what was happening in their lungs. So when they treat these same people with the CBD treatment, they live. They don't need ventilators. The cytostorms stop. So we'll get into it in a minute. And believe me, this is some real breakthrough shit. So if you get bored and you're already ready to leave, that's cool. Flip, flip to the end of the video or flip through here when I get into these actual studies. But I'm going to read this real quick from uh, the New York Post. High hope. They have high hopes for a corona, corona breakthrough. A team of Canadian scientists believes it has found strong strains of cannabis that could help prevent, treat, or treat uh, coronavirus infections, according to interviews and a study. Researchers from the University of Lethbridge said a study in April showed at least 13 cannabis plants were high in CBD that appeared to affect the ACE2 pathways or the ACE2 pathways that the bug uses to access the body. We were totally stunned at first. And then we were really happy, one of the researchers, Olga Kovalchuk, told CTV News. <clears throat> the results printed in an online uh, journal preprints indicated hemp extracts high in CBD may help block proteins that provide a gateway for COVID-19 to enter host cells. Kovalchuk's husband, Igor, suggested the cannabis could reduce the virus entry points by up to 70%. Therefore, you have more chance to fight it, he told CTV. Our work uh, could have a huge influence. There aren't many drugs that have potential of reducing infection by 70 to 80%, he told the Calgary Herald. While they stressed that more research was needed, the study gave hope that, that cannabis, if, providing, or if proven to modulate the enzyme, may prove a plausible strategy for decreasing disease susceptibility as well as becoming a useful and safe addition to the treatment of COVID-19 as an adjunct therapy. Cannabis could even be used to develop easy-to-use preventable treatments in the form of mouthwash and throat gargle products, the study suggests, with the potential of decreased viral entry through the mouth. The key thing is not that any, is not that any cannabis you would pick up at the store would do the trick, Olga told CTV, of course. <laughs> With the study suggested just a handful of more than 800 varieties of sativa seem to help. All were high in anti-inflammatory CBD, but low in THC, the part that produces a cannabis high. The study, which has yet to be peer-reviewed, was carried out in a partnership with Pathway RX, a cannabis therapy research company, and Swish, Incorporated, a cannabinoid-based research company. The researchers are seeking funding to contribute their efforts or to continue their efforts to support scientific initiatives to address COVID-19. Uh, while our most effective extracts require further large-scale validation, our study is crucial for the future analysis of the effects of medical cannabis on COVID-19, the research said. Given the current dire and rapidly evolving epidemiological situation, every possible therapeutic opportunity and avenue must be considered, you would think. So there you have it. That's one of the studies we'll be looking at. Um, well, that's more of a look than I'll probably give the rest of them. But uh, what we're doing here is we're talking about cannabis extracts, high in CBD, low in THC, that, you know, that, that cause a 70% reduction in available... Um, <clears throat> entry points for the virus that's more effective than these vaccines they're claiming are supposed to you know what are these vaccines anyway they call them vaccines but the vaccine manufacturers ceos dr fauci the cdc who and the nih have all said that a the this does not prevent you from spreading or prevent you from contracting the virus and that it only reduces symptoms and as far as side effects go, there's no long-term studies on long-term side effects. And every time somebody has a problem with uh, right after they got the shot, we're not allowed to ask questions about it. We're just supposed to assume that it could have already happened to this person, whether they took the, the vaccine or not, and all this. So what it sounds like is vaccine equals Sudafed. <laughs> it's, a, it's not a vaccine. It just reduces symptoms. So how can that be considered a vaccine? 
I mean, when this thing first started, when these articles were being written, people in Italy were talking about, oh, use elderberry syrup. That reduces the symptoms better than anything else. Really? Well, then, as soon as that came out, all these people in the mainstream media around here in America were telling you that elderberry syrup didn't work and it was a bad idea to use stuff like that because, you know, you're putting yourself at risk with false hopes. Hmm, that's what I think masks are. <laughs> Acting like you're going to put on a mask and stop a virus or stop yourself from releasing viruses is just absurd, all right? Viruses are so much smaller than the whole of a mask. It's just ridiculous. You know, if you want to prevent yourself from spreading a virus to somebody else or getting a virus from from out there where, the, where viruses might be, they have suits called hazmat suits. They cost like $5,000, and I'm sure no one's going to be running around town wearing those, all right? Um, just, just ridiculous. You know, and like I, you go back here, these guys talking about this and how there's no study. Well, give it a minute, all right? Because the studies were already happening when that article came out. Now we have even more studies. We have a lot of studies. In fact, here's an article talking about all the current studies. And this was in October of 2020 when this came out. So there's even been even more. And this is from Cannabis. It's Canamed, uh One of the top cannabinoid references. And... This is their publication, Cannabis Science and Technology. I'm not familiar with it, but this is a pretty good summary of what was what's going on so far. It's a review on a handful of recent articles related to COVID-19 and cannabis, as well as an interview with top medical cannabis expert, Dr. Prakash Nagar, Nagar, Nagar Kadi. Um, <clears throat> there has been a recent flurry of scientific manuscripts and articles published on the topic of potential applications of cannabinoids and terp terpenes for coronavirus prevention or treatment of symptoms. This spike in research into cannabis and COVID-19 gives us hope for future treatments and paves the way for future medical cannabis research. In, the ins in this installment of Cannabis Crossroads, I review a handful of recent articles related to COVID-19 and cannabis. I also spoke with a top medical cannabis expert, Dr. Prakash Nagarkadi, Vice President for Research at the University of South Carolina, to get a better sense of where future research efforts are heading. Dr. Nagarkadi has recently shown that tetrahydrocannabinol uh, THC can prevent the development of colitis-associated colon cancer in mice. Under his leadership and guidance, USC has patented U.S. Food and Drug Administration Approved process for treating autoimmune hepatitis with cannabidiol derived from hemp. So, excellent work being done in in the University of Southern or South Carolina. We'll get more into that in a minute. Um, oh, this is just the uh, this is just the interview with with that doctor. All right. So, I kind of wanted to do this first, just before we got into the further the the greater studies um let me go find that list of studies all right yes okay um Yeah, well, let's go ahead and read this article first because this is kind of, it's a good way to get you, uh, it's a good precursor for the rest of the studies. So thank you for joining me to discuss potential cannabis applications in coronavirus research. Could you please tell us about your laboratory research focus at USC? Uh, Dr. P, our laboratory is located in the University of Southern California in Columbia, South Carolina. My primary research interests are in the areas of inflammation. We are looking at how botanicals suppress inflammation. One of the projects we are working on is how cannabinoids suppress inflammation and cancer. We have been pursuing this research for more than 20 years. Our research is funded by the National Institute of Health. Um, please summarize the results of your recent work related to the cytokine storm that is associated with COVID-19 to help our readers understand why this is important. <clears throat> our recent research has shown that THC found in cannabis can suppress acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS, 
and cytokine storm induced by bacterial toxin staphylococcal uh, enterotoxin B. This toxin can cause ARDS in humans as well as animals. In mice, this toxin can trigger ARDS and cytokine storm, resulting in respiratory and multi-organ failure and the mice dying in less than five days. In this model, we found that THC can be completely uh, can completely prevent ARDS, cytokine storms, and mortality because the this ARDS is similar to that seen in COVID-19 patients who develop ARDS. Our data suggests that THC may be effective against severe forms of COVID-19 that lead to ARDS, cytokine storms, and a high percentage of mortality. It should be noted that ARDS kills almost 40% of patients, and currently there is no FDA-approved drug to treat this disease. I would like to caution that our data should not be interpreted to suggest that cannabis is good to prevent COVID-19 infection. Our results only suggest that it is good to treat the severe form of COVID-19 in which, due to ARDS and cytokine storm, a significant portion of patients die. Now, that's what he's saying about this study, but there are other studies and products available to help you prevent um, contracting the virus. Uh, more on that later. So cannabis is not one single medicine. Each chem come over has unique cannabinoid and terp terpenoid fingerprint. Which cannabinoids were researched in your article? Can you speak to which types of cannabis or cannabinoids seem to have the greatest benefit for viral infections? Doctor, uh, <laughs> I said Dr. P. Okay, Dr. N. Dr. Nagarkati. We worked on THC. We have not done any studies to see if cannabinoids can prevent viral replication. What biochemical pathways do cannabinoids appear to be influencing that may result either in protection from infection or potential therapeutic benefits? Cannabinoids such as THC suppress inflammation through a variety of mechanisms. They induce T cells that suppress inflammation called regulatory T cells. They also induce microRNA that triggers cytokines such as IL-10 and TGFB that are immunosuppressive. The microRNA can also induce generation of other types of cells that suppress inflammation called myelide-derived suppressor cells. Um, we are interested in using cannabinoids such as THC and CBD to treat inflammatory and autoimmune diseases and cancer. Our work on the use of CBD to treat autoimmune hepatitis has been recognized by the FDA, and the FDA has approved the use of CBD to treat autoimmune hepatitis as an orphan drug. We just published a paper showing THC attenuates uh, inflammation in the colon and thereby prevents colon cancer. Any closing thoughts on the topics of cannabinoids, terpenes, and other cannabis components that appear to be worth investigating in future studies? Um, he said cannabis has more than 100 cannabinoids, of which only two, THC and CBD, have been well studied. Thus, there is plenty of opportunity to explore all others. In closing, I would like to highlight the work described above is scientific research and further studies are needed to better understand the full potential of cannabinoids and terpenes for treating coronavirus. The FDA has, in fact, issued several warning letters to CDB companies for selling fraudulent products with claims to prevent, treat, mitigate, diagnose, or cure COVID. The contents of this article are intended for informational and educational purposes only and not only for the purpose of rendering medical advice. The contents of this article and the manuscript reference herein are not intended to substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Please consult your physician personalized for personalized medical advice. Always seek the advice of a physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions regarding medical condition. So that was uh, part one of this video. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and stop right now because I was looking through and I couldn't find um, this really inclusive article that had all the studies from 2020 in it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and look for that. And then I'm going to read this one here. Multiple clinical risks for cannabis users during COVID-19 pandemic. And this was just published on January 20th of this year, 2021. And this is Biomedic Med Central. I don't know who that is or who, this, who these people are trying to claim these claims. But what they're trying to say is, is that... Um, yeah, 
people that smoke weed are a special group of people to look at during the pandemic because they're more susceptible to getting it's just just complete bullshit all right everything that they're saying here is just complete garbage and flies in the face of all the studies that i'm about to summarize in part two of this video so part two of this video i'm going to go ahead and quickly go over this summation that they're talking about here at bmc port of springer nature part of springer nature whatever that means i'm gonna i'm gonna look at this and and i'm gonna tell you all of the studies that have been done so far who's doing them how, what stage they're in what's going on what medicines are being developed because of these studies where the studies are being conducted and that will be part two of this video so tune in if you want to check that out um it'll be a really good reference so if you need to later on tell somebody else about these studies you can just reference that video um thanks for tuning in again and maybe i'll start making more videos who knows um hard to say it's pretty boring around here <laughs> ain't much else to do all right peace